Hello, Church of Our Savior. It is Wednesday, November 29th. Last Wednesday night at our Thanksgiving Eve service, as part of our liturgy, we offered a general thanksgiving. And in that prayer, we say this. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. When we pray that prayer, I wanna stop the service and ask people by show of hands, how many of you are really thankful for your disappointments and failures? I imagine many people would struggle to raise their hand and say yes to that. I know I've struggled with that prayer and with that whole idea for a long time. I think it took me years to get to the point when I could pray that prayer with some degree of sincerity and conviction. The reality is that anybody watching this message, members of our church certainly, you know, we all want to be good people. We want to be loving and compassionate and generous and kind and in all of those good things. And when we fail to do that, when we fail to be the people we want to be, it hurts. I mean, I know speaking for myself, all the little ways when I become impatient and irritable and upset and fail to be loving and kind, those really weigh on me. And then those are the little things. Then I think of the big things, the times when I've really hurt other people and disappointed them and made really bad mistakes and just screwed up. That's also extremely painful for me. And it can lead me to a variety of reactions. Uh, one, it can make me rigidly just say, I'm gonna try harder, I'm gonna do better and try to achieve perfection. Or I might go into denial mode. Well, I, I didn't do that. It wasn't that bad. It couldn't be that bad because I can't deal with it being that bad. Or maybe I'll just decide to beat myself up and say, yeah, I, I'm awful. I'm terrible. Look what I did. I'm just so bad. All of those reactions, however, are very egocentric. They're all focused on me, my ego, my needs. But there is a different way to approach our failures, our disappointments. And that is to sort of step outside of our ego and to acknowledge the fact that, yeah, we are a mixed bag. We will always be a mixed bag. Jesus tells that wonderful parable of the weeds in the wheat. There are weeds growing among those wheat stalks and he tells the workers in that parable, just accept that fact and it will be sorted out in the end. And that's true for each one of us. No matter how hard we try, no matter how committed we are to perfection or to achievement, the reality is we're gonna fail at times. We're gonna make mistakes. We're gonna sin. There will always be weeds in my wheat field, no matter what. I can rail against that, I can try to resist that, I can try to somehow overcome that, or I can accept that basic truth. I am a human being. I am not going to be perfect in this world. Richard Rohr, the Franciscan writer, once said, the only true perfection available to us is the honest acknowledgement of our imperfection. And you know, as hard as it has been for me to get to that point, that's a very liberating thing. To be able to say to myself, to others, to God, yeah, I am imperfect. Yeah, I'm just never going to be all that I want to be. That doesn't mean I, I don't try to mature and grow. It doesn't mean that I don't try to be more loving, more compassionate, I do. It just means that I accept the fact that, yeah, I'm not going to, on my own power, be able to do that, at least not in this life. And what's led me to that point, honestly, are my failures, are the things I've done wrong, which over the course of time, the Holy Spirit has used to help me see that I am a human being dependent on the love and the mercy of God. So yeah, I, I'm thankful for my failures and my disappointments. But it's not just for that sense of liberation and relief that no, I'm not perfect. 
it leads to even something better than that. Because when we have the humility, the honesty to accept ourselves as we are flawed human beings, then we are open enough to receive the grace and the mercy and the power of God moving through us. This is what Paul talks about in 2 Corinthians. You know, he complains to God about this thorn in the flesh. We don't know what that thorn in the flesh was, but certainly for Paul, it was a source of frustration, failure, disappointment. And he prays for it to be removed and God won't remove it. And as Paul understands it, God says to him, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Paul discovers that the good he's able to do isn't because he's some kind of superhero, isn't because he's so awesome, it's because an awesome God is working through him. And that is true for all of us. It's not that God holds God's nose and tolerates us. God actually works through us in the midst of our failures and imperfections. God uses us for good, for love, precisely in the midst of our fallible humanity. That is an awesome truth. And the only way I've come to experientially know that is because I fail as often as I do. And I am able to see that mercy and that grace at work. If we're too enclosed in our own ego, our own ego needs to be perfect or our own ego needs to beat ourselves up for not being imperfect or denying ever having been imperfect, then we won't see that we, all of us, swim in an ocean of mercy and grace. That love, that grace, that power of God is not only surrounding us, it is filling us and flowing through us. We want to know that. It's a source of joy, freedom, and peace. And it's what God calls us to experience as followers of Jesus Christ. So yeah, we're gonna fail. We're gonna feel disappointed. We're gonna disappoint others. But truly, we can, all of us, pray, I think with real sincerity, we thank you also for those failures and disappointments that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Have a great week. God loves you. I love you. Peace.